On this episode with Dan on the Street, Dan meets up with Casal Jewelers' very own Corey Scheifer. Next on Dan on the Street. We're about to meet Dan on the Street, yeah. D A N Dan on the Street, yeah. Talking anything with Dan on the Street, yeah. And joining us today, Corey Shifter, owner of Casal Jewelers, also known as the, the King of Diamonds here in Staten Island. We also have from the Dayhab crew, Jonathan and Brandon. Welcome, Corey. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm so you want to tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about the jewelry store and, and where you're at? Sure. Uh, I'm located on Staten Island at uh, 1639 Richmond Road, right in the Toad Hill area. Uh, I took over from my family when we purchased Casal Jewelers in 2009. And uh, my family's been in the business since 1986 over at Independent Jewelers. Um, so I grew up in the business, grew up learning the business, and grew up about learning about how to really put community first. And, and building a business, which I learned from my mom and dad, which has kind of led me to where I am today, uh, as being a community-minded biz, small business that really, really does focus on, uh, on giving back and doing what we can to support our community. So it's been a lot of fun. Speaking of community, these guys have a couple questions for you about that. Okay. So, can you tell us why you measure diamonds in carrots, Doc? Carrot stock. Well, it's not from Bugs Bunny, but I'll tell you one thing though. Uh, the reason why is that there, it's a measurement on a scale, right? So, so diamonds go on a scale just like we do. So just like we're measured, let's say in pounds, right? When you go on a scale, I weigh 165 on a good day, pounds, right? Diamonds are first measured in points, right? So a one carat diamond is equivalent to 100 points, right? So that one carat, depending on how it rolls, is kind of the standard. And who told me that? My mom and dad. So that's, that's where that came from. But not, it probably didn't originate there, but, but that's kind of how it goes. It's measured on a scale basis. So. What is the biggest diamond you have ever seen and why? And why? Well, this man wanted to make his wife very happy. That's why, right? And the biggest diamond uh, I've ever sold was an 8 carat 66. Um, it was about the size of an eyeball, a big eyeball. And uh, absolutely beautiful, bright, and vibrant. And when you think about the 8.66 carats, that's 866 points on a scale. So when you think about people, think about like, you know, a, a, a carat diamond is 100 points. So think about a 100 pound person. This is an 866 point diamond, which is pretty impressive and pretty big. And it was a round shape. So it was really, really pretty and bright too. Yes. So that's, <laughs> that's the biggest one you ever sold. What's the biggest diamond that you've ever seen? So I've had the luxury of walking through the crown jewels, the palace uh, of the queen in London as a guest of De Beers. So I don't know how big they were, but about this big, I guess, on some of the crowns and some of the jewels that the previous queens had worn uh, throughout history. So they weren't labeled its size, but I did see some amazing uh, pieces uh, that were designed specifically for the queens throughout history. So that would probably be the biggest I've ever seen, but not knowing what the size was. So it's pretty impressive, yes. You are always giving back, celebrating others with making a difference with your charity work. Why? You know what, honestly, when I first took over this business, um, it was very new to me. I wanted to find a way to make a difference, not just for myself, but for our Staten Island community. So. Everything I started to do, I started to put our community first, started to join boards and started to get involved with the uh, American Cancer Society and, and uh, different organizations on Staten Island that just needed help. And I guess my gift, and I feel it's a blessing, is to be able to be creative in how I do things. So I would come up with fun, creative ways to support charities and at the same time kind of get out into the community as a, as a business owner that enjoys giving back and I find joy in helping, in helping others. Now, your wife was one of the healthcare heroes during the pandemic. You want to give her a quick shout out? Sure. Jess, you're the best. Uh, my wife, um, as we closed our store the next day, went to a, uh, an intensive care unit for COVID uh, at St. Joseph's Hospital um, and uh, worked seven weeks and did everything she possibly could to be able to save the lives of others and to put herself out there at risk, uh, especially at that time. Uh, and she did it for our family and we swapped. You know, we swapped lives. So I, I was taking care of the kids, homeschooling, and she was actually out there serving and helping uh, those in need. So God bless you, Jess. I love you. I'm proud of her. You're a very outgoing person. Do you do all your own marketing? I come up with the idea, and then I have people help me execute, right? So there are certain things that I can't do, uh, but there are certain things I, I do. Uh, and the thing is, is coming up with a fun, creative way 
to market our business and to do events that not only promote the business but also support uh, charities. We ran for many years a, a race for a ring. So what we would do is, is we would have these couples run around and do these challenges and, and ultimately one couple would win an engagement ring and get to propose in front of their friends and family, in front of everybody. But in turn, they would have to do community work. Uh, we would host a comedy night, which we, we would give back to charities as well. So over the nine years of doing it, we've raised over $150,000 uh, for nonprofits on Staten Island. So, you know, everything we do is, a, is what I call a big picture. We love the VW bug parked outside in the Abe Lincoln segment. I'm glad you love it. I love it too. And it's fun, right? Otherwise, what's the point? If you can't laugh at yourself and have some fun and do something that others find joy in as well, then, then there's no purpose, right? So like you kind of, in marketing, that's the way you have to think, when, especially when you advertise within a business, a small business like ours. We have to try to be effective. And my Abe Lincoln was, you know, b believe it or not, was, uh, was, was something I always thought about because, you know, his the beginning of his speech was four score and seven years ago, right? So, so we have four seas of diamonds and seven stone shapes ago. So that's kind of how it all started off. One day I was sitting there and I thought this would be a lot of fun. So I walked around with an Abe Lincoln hat, Abe Lincoln beard, and played the role. And I really talked like this, and I did a great job of doing it as well. Oh, How's you? this? Oh, you're even good. Oh, you're, really good. Both of us, you got the beard too. It's yeah. great. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Corey, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for everything that you do in the community and uh, what your family does. And Jonathan Brandon, thank you for being a great co-host today. That's Dan on the Street. Yeah.